Hi there, welcome back everybody. In today's video, we're gonna use these two lovely little molds. One is, it's not a lizard, it's a gecko apparently. I've been corrected. It's a gecko, that's that one that Wayne is currently holding. So Wayne's gonna be doing the demoing. Going to use these beautiful eyes. Now we use these in our frog. If you haven't seen that video, why not check our playlist to go and have a look at that one. We're also gonna use some lovely UV resin. Uh, the UV torch. So obviously a warning. We're going to be there's going to be a UV resin light. Um, the Let's Resin um, metallic powders. That's I think it was copper, bronzy color, and a chameleon mica powder as well. Also using the lovely snail mold there. So here we go. So one Wayne's already put one of the eyes in place in the mold. So by what you do with this, as we did with the frog mold, um, you put a little dot of UV resin just in where you want to place the eye there you go by all means wear gloves respirator mark uh, mask and work in a well ventilated room if you want to um, protect yourself at all times but Wayne's quite confident using the UV resin so he doesn't feel the need to wear the gloves so he's just put the eye in there he's using a cocktail stir stick an old one that we have um, just to position it how he wants it he found that was the easiest thing to do rather than trying to use tweezers and just applying now the UV light directly into where the eye is so he's just trying to set it up and then uh, just a warning there's going to be more UV light just in a moment because he's going to set the resin from the other side of the mold as well so here we go so just holding it in place and then and from underneath as well there we are love the blue that illuminates the molds <laughs> with with this little light so this is a fantastic little torch definitely something to have in your kit of tools for when you're using resin look at that so hopefully now you can see there's one eye and then there's the other one fantastic so they should be in set in place enough to proceed with the next step. So there we are. Going to use this. Now this is the chameleon powder. It's called plum. But in some lights it looks brownie coloured, coppery coloured, pinky purpley coloured. It literally is a chameleon of colours. So um, this one's not been used before. So we've just got to move off that little safety seal. Uh, Wayne's going to use just a general paintbrush. Our artist paintbrush, not an expensive one, to apply the powder. And as you can see, put quite a lot in there, although I have to say a little normally goes a long way. So he's just using, not, not used this mold before, and he's just using the paintbrush just to move the uh, metallic, the chameleon powder, sorry, not the metallic, the chameleon mica powder um, around the mold trying to put it where he wants it to go. If it does go anywhere where you don't want it, if you get a little cotton wool bud, uh, pop some isopropyl alcohol on the end and that will just clean it off of the mold. So yeah, there we go. So just up to the end and when he's happy, he'll move on to the next step. So he's just gonna get rid of any excess directly back into that little container. We are just literally brushes it off. Look at that effect. It reminds me of is it a chrysalis with butterflies. Butterflies, of course, being one of my favourite things. Um, so there we go. So he's also decided he's going to apply it further up the body. Um, so he's already done a little bit of it. He's just being a little bit more careful now. Now you can follow whatever pattern is in the mold if there is a pattern with some detail on the body or you can make up your own um, obviously you can use whatever colors you want to use you don't have to use the ones that we're using here or use the brands that we use um, by the way everything that we do use in today's video will be listed in the description box for you um, so yeah to just popping it into the body going down almost like the spine I don't think they have spines though do they um, so there he goes. Uh, you could just put it just in the legs and the little feet, the little, again, I don't know if they're like toes. Do they call them little toes? 
uh, I don't know. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know anything about reptiles and insects and stuff like that. Butterflies, ladybirds, that's about, and bees, that's about my thing. <laughs> this is much more Wayne's thing, the geckos, chameleons, that sort of thing. So there we go. Uh, so now we're moving on to the snail. So the snail from my child, I remember, was, I believe, Brian. I think his name was Brian from the Magic Roundabout. If that's right, why not put comments in the... Uh, drop us a comment to confirm. Did you watch the Magic Roundabout? Um, and no, Brian the snail. And, of course, Dylan the rabbit. <laughs> Here we go. So he's just uh, loaded up his brush again. Uh, with the uh, mica powder, same colour with as with the uh, the gecko there, and he's just sort of placing it in around the base of the squishy part of the snail's body. Oh, I don't like thinking about that. Uh, and a little bit up into some of the shell as well. There we go. Just making sure that all little bits of it covered. Now we've not had a lot of luck with making snails from resin in the past we normally find that the antennae uh either either for whatever reason it doesn't go down into the mold properly or that they break when you try and demold so lessons learned would be squish the mold properly to get rid of any air bubbles um put a little micro brush into it perhaps as well um into those places it was just tapping off the excess there and uh, just, yeah, just make sure that you let it cure for long enough. So this is the resin. Uh, again, this is the last of the resin pro resin, the very last. And it is a one to one mixing ratio. Now he's using the metallic, let's resin metallic powder. I think this is the copper, but I'm not 100% because he doesn't actually show us. <laughs> Um, but as I say, you know, it will be listed in the description box exactly what he did use. This, I mean, it's gorgeous. Absolutely fantastic. The sheen on it, it looks smooth, like molten. It does look like molten metal when it's all mixed. Obviously, stir thoroughly. Go careful when you're stirring so you don't splash anything anywhere. Um, this is actually in real time. That was how, look at that. That was how quickly you were stirring it. But you take your time because obviously you're going to end up incorporating bubbles. So here we are with the uh, gecko mould. He's just pouring it in there, into the mould. Resin will, because it's self-leveling, it will find its own way around in the mould um, eventually. Obviously you've got to make sure you do pour enough in. If you don't feel confident... Um, pouring it straight out of this mixing cup like Wayne is. You can decant it into smaller little silicon mixing jugs if you've got them uh, with the preformed spout on them or if you've got any little of the little cups, the mixing cups, the little thin plastic throwaway ones, then, you know, why not de decant some into there and then you've got more control over what you're doing. So you can see it's worked its way through the body, through the head, in the tail not quite gone into the legs yet so he's just pouring a little bit more and then he's just going to wait not that you're going to see this because we cut the we cut that bit coming up um but the next shot you will see where, where it's all gone into the little splayed toes of our gecko as well there we go as you can see so he's going to put that to one side he's going to give it a couple of spritz with some isopropyl alcohol just to get rid of any bubbles and surface bubbles and then we'll go back and check it again in about half an hour see if any more bubbles that have come up so here we have the snail brian <laughs> and wayne is he's just poured in a small amount of resin now apologies this next bit that he does is off camera for some reason um you know what it's like when you're concentrating and you're in the zone you don't always remember about oh hang on it's not in shot with the camera so what he's doing is he's just making sure that that resin is coating the antennae of the snail and that there are no air bubbles and he's doing there we go see and into the head and the antennae and he's doing it using a micro brush. So he's just pushing it down, as you can see. Can you see there? Just about. It's quite difficult to actually show uh, anything using this snail. Um, but there we go. Look at that. It's just pooling back down into the larger part of the mould there. Ooh. 
right just clearing up little drips as he goes he's very clean as way he's a very clean crafter <laughs> Anyway, there we go. It's just making sure there's definitely no air bubbles there. You just do that by pinching the outside of the mould where, uh, you know, where the antennae are. And here he goes. He's just topping it up. The rest of the mould. Apologies, you've got a big close-up of the cup there. As I said, it's a little bit difficult to um, show you how it actually pours into the mould. But I'm sure you get the gist of what you're supposed to do. There we are, it's just filling it up slowly and carefully, making sure that none of it is spilt and uh, up to the uh, top of the mould. There we go. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. And then again, a couple of spritzes with some isopropyl alcohol and then leaves it to cure. Now this is a day later. Now, ideally you'd leave it for longer. In the summer or warmer months, the summer months, um, it'd probably take the following day. You can demold and it will be a lot firmer than this. But um, this was the following day and we're still in sort of, we're still just almost into spring here in the UK, I think now. Um, so he's taking extra special care when demolding this because you don't want anything breaking off getting left in the mold getting damaged especially around where these little delicate parts are with the feet and the little splayed toes of the uh, of the gecko i keep wanting to say chameleon of the gecko there we go so just going around this one there we are that's that one out and then off from the head that's it and there we go so probably could have done with filling that one up maybe a smidgen more but look at that oh the chameleon powder looks gorgeous and the copper now I wasn't convinced when he told me his colorways he was going to use but that that looks excellent I mean there's the yellow eyes on that side and that side wow I mean, that is quite realistic. Um, as I say, not that I know a lot about geckos, but um, that, that one came out really, really good. So here we are with the snail. Let's see if Brian has worked. Oh, here we go. Carefully round the antenna, which is where we have to, had the issues before. Oh, wow. Yes, no, that's come out of the mould nice and clean. Look at the way that the copper colour has mixed and with that lovely plum um, chameleon powder. Really nice um, colour shift going on there. Pinks, purpley colours, the copper, beautiful. Here's our final shot of the two friends together on one of my kitchen boards. <laughs> Thanks for joining us uh, and watching this video tuning in, uh, liking, sharing and subscribing. Don't forget to check out our previous how-to videos. We've got quite a few uploaded now. We are going to continue with the natural world, but maybe with a bit of a shift perhaps towards a botanical, floral and so on. Thanks again. Bye-bye. <laughs>